a kahiriak and tussel, ukteran, kolti el ele den farti nashuanta. Mr. Chairman, President, fellow members of the National Party, the theme of this meeting is a country of our own, where, where we will be discussing the scourge of mass immigration that threatens our distinctive Irish national identity and the unique character of Irish nationhood. At previous National Party meetings, uh, I refer to the great quote of the martyred President of the Irish Republic declared on Easter week 1916, Patrick Pearce, who proclaimed that he sought an Ireland not merely Gaelic but free as well, and not merely free but Gaelic as well. This Pearcean truism explained the real purpose of the Gaelic revival movement uh, that he was centrally involved in and uh, which culminated uh, uh, with uh, his leading the Rebellion for Irish Freedom uh, uh, in 1916. Without the attainment of national freedom, Pierce well realised that the Gaelic revival movement expressed in terms of the movement to revive the Irish language, na uh, namely the Gaelic League, and the movement to revive Gaelic games, namely the G Gaelic Athletics Association, were empty efforts on their own. Patrick Pierce and our Patriot Dead gave their lives for the cause of Irish freedom, for Irish nationhood and the very survival of Gaelic cultural identity. Our Patriot Dead gave their lives for the cause of, of Gaelic culturalism that is monoculturalism and clearly not multiculturalism that like a killer virus ravages Irish nationhood and threatens our distinctive cultural identity with extinction. <laughs> and the avowed enemies of Irish nationhood and Gaelic cultural identity is our rigged political system of the puppet Maharaja-led government that is subordinate to the EU federal superstate. The political classes represented in our parliamentary regime and the mainstream media that are unrelenting in their efforts to destroy Irish nationhood through social engineering and the conditioning of public opinion into accepting uh, the nation-wrecking disease of multiculturalism. History has many examples of the destructive effects of mass immigration throughout the world. Mass immigration of European settlers into North America caused the extinct, extinction of the native Iroquois uh, Indian tribe and to the herding of those na native North American Indians who were not killed into reservations. I live in the small county of Longford that has been ravaged by mass immigration. According to the most recent 2016 census data, one in every three people resident in my county town of Longford is non-national, as is the case of my local town of Edgerstown, where one in three people uh, are also non-nationals. Indeed, Edgerstown, in Edgerstown there are 17 recorded nationalities. Uh, in, in fact, uh, there, there are also migrant ghettos in Edgerstown. That's, uh, and th th that's now been called Migrants Town be because Sharia law has been practiced in some of the migrant ghettos in that town. And in, the, and in Longford Town, there is the famous landmark of the Nigerian Embassy on the Market Square. The very heart of this once prosperous uh, county town has been rendered uh, a commercial wasteland. And it, is, and it is an established fact that mass immigration was lar that has largely contributed to the demise of this once thriving Midlands hub town. The Section, 20, sec the Section 23 in uh, tax incentive for the Shannon Corridor, introduced by the Fianna Fáil-led government of former Taoiseach Albert Reynolds, created the, Im the, incent the economic incentive for Longford Town to become a migrant hub town to accommodate so-called asylum seekers and direct provision. If we go, if we go to, to other towns around the country, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, town of Ballyhonas in County Mayo uh, holds the ignominious title of having the largest foreign proportion of residents 
with an alarming 40% of the population of that Connacht town being non-Irish. In relation to the larger towns and cities in this state, a massive 18.6% of the population of Galway City is non-Irish. Now, when Galway was given the nickname of the City of the Tribes, I'm supremely confident that those who gave Galway that name certainly did not envisage such an extensive number of foreign tribes that occupy that city. And a mass of 17% of the population of Dublin, or one in six, are non-Irish. According to those census figures, a mass of 11.6% of the total population of the 26 counties free state are now non-Irish, which is a cause of great concern for all of us who hold uh, dear and recognise the real worth of protecting the well-being of the Irish nation and the welfare of, of, the, of its people. And of course there is the ongoing scam of direct provision for bogus asylum seekers, for the most part, that take this country for a soft touch. There is estimated to be more than 5,000 such people in direct provision that has enriched unpatriotic private companies that provide direct provision services to these foreigners claiming to be fleeing persecution, even though some of those are from EU, fellow EU member states such as Romania and Bulgaria and the Czech Republic. And the direct provision, and direct provision comes at a cost to Irish taxpayers of an excess of 400 million euro between 2010 and 2017, and is estimated to cost taxpayers a further 67 million euro this year. And this at a time when this country has a homelessness crisis. There is no pr direct provision for Irish people who hit on hard times. There is, an old, there is an old saying that charity begins at home and that's very apt when comparing the stark contrast between the treatment of our own people and foreign nationals who test the patience of even the most compassionate of people. And our open borders and mass, uh, and our open borders and mass immigration has also resulted in the importation of foreign criminals. Like in the case of... Uh, uh, the, the, the killing of uh, Shane O'Farrell from uh, Carrick Macross in County Monaghan, who was mowed down while cycling near his home on the N2 road between Carrick Macross and Castlebany on August the 2nd, 2011, by a Lithuanian serial criminal, uh, Zygmantis, whatever, who, who, had multiple, who had multiple convictions for drug use and robbery, both sides of the Irish border, and was out on bail when he killed Shane O'Farrell with devastating consequences for Shane's loving family. And there is also the case of a 37-year-old uh, uh, mother of two, Sharon Coughlin from Longford, who I knew well as she worked as a barmaid in the market bar in that town, and who was brutally raped and murdered by a Czech uh, asylum seeker and drug addict, David Brusnowski, who, uh, who, had a strong, uh, who had a string of convictions in his home country for theft, extortion and battery, as well as a previous convictions in Belgium for theft and aggravated theft. And although he was sentenced to life imprisonment for his crimes that left a 10-year-old ten year girl and a 4-year-old boy as orphans, uh, the disgraced, foreign, uh, the disgraced former, former Minister for Justice, Alan Shatter, in a measure of undeserved clemency for this person, authorised that this foreign criminal be deported to serve his life sentence near his family in his home country. Since Irish borders were open to mass immigration by the uh, disgraced treasonous party Ahern level led uh, Fianna Fáil PD government in 2004, there has been no serious effort undertaken by the authorities in Angarda Síochána to screen those who arrived on our, our shores for criminal convictions in their countries of origin. And it was the decision of the same Fianna Fáil PD government to adopt an open-door policy to migration into this state from the new EU member states in Central and Eastern Europe that were former Soviet bloc countries on, on January the 1st, 2004, at a time when only the UK and Sweden adopted a similar policy that has uh, had such a devastating social impact in, in uh, both those countries also. 
The other 12 Western European, uh, uh, Western EU uh, member states at the time closed their borders to immigration from the 10 accession EU states for a period of seven years after the new, uh, new member states had joined the EU in 2004. And, it, and, and, and let us not forget that it was mass immigration that created the population bubble, that together with the euro, euro currency fueled credit bubble, that produced the building bubble, that in turn caused the overheating of the economy, that caused the economic crash of 2008, that in turn resulted in the, in the bank bailout, and the Irish taxpayers funded compensation of the Rothschild banking cartel and other foreign bondholders who gambled uh, on the fortunes of the defunct uh, bust Anglo-Irish bank and um, th that put Irish taxpayers on the hook for a whopping 64 billion euro that was added to the national debt and that resulted in an austerity, austerity program uh, uh, administered by the then Fine Gael Labour government on the instructions of the foreign troika of the IMF, ECB and EU Commission and that was paid for by Irish taxpayers and continues to be paid for uh, uh, by Irish taxpayers into, fu into future generations. And apart from being the principal contributor to wrecking the Irish economy, mass immigration has displaced Irish jobs, created a massive black hole in the welfare budget funded by Irish taxpayers, and is used uh, as, as a, a t the tool of globalised corporate business to keep Irish wage rates down so that Irish people must compete with foreign nationals for employment in their own country. Mass immigration has put a strain on our health services with increased hospital waiting lists and sick people lying on trolleys rather than in beds in our hospitals and has been the cause of uh, uh, diseases like uh, TB and exotic diseases being introduced by some migrants into our hospitals that pose a health risk to other patients. Other um, unrestricted, and unrestricted immigration and unrestricted immigration has contributed to the housing and homelessness crisis because of our own people having to compete with foreign nationals for accommodation. And mass immigration into this country has created a substantial Muslim immigrant population, as has already been mentioned uh, by previous speakers, that poses a very real security risk to our people and the real uh, danger of future Islamic conquest through colonisation. We must never forget that Islam is a barbaric ideology that poses under the guise of, our, of an organised religion. And Sharia law and the barbaric halal slaughter of animals is already carried out within the borders of the state. Yeah. Also, the, the Varadkar government announced with great fanfare the ambitious uh, multicultural Ireland 2040 plan Again, previous speaker, uh, as, it, as alluded to, uh, uh, at a cost of 116 billion euro of borrowed credit money from international finance, borne by Irish taxpayers, uh, th that uh, envisages an increase in the population of, of 1 million in this state between now and 2040, and that lays uh, out a plan for the growth of selected hub cities around the country to accommodate. Uh, increased uh, 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 immigrant communities uh, that, that would form the backbone of a new multicultural Ireland where Irish uh, culture and nationhood would be consigned to, to being a footnote in Irish history, that our educational system is, uh, by the way, taking off the, the syllabus. And if I may, in conclusion, if I may go back to my original point that I began this speech with, namely that mass immigration destroys the very character of Irish nationhood that every, every Irish person is a custodian of. And being custodians of Irish, of Irish nationhood, we have a duty to do everything in our power to protect and uphold the good of our great nation that our, forefa our forefathers gave their very lives for in, in the many rebellions against foreign English rule and occupation. Irish people have no right, and certainly democracies claim to bestow such a, an invalid right as, a collect, as collective prodigal sons, to sell out that bloody sacrifice of our forefathers 
who died for the cause of Irish freedom, for them and future generations of our people, by giving away this country that belongs to that indivisible Irish nation as defined in the Easter Proclamation, uh, to foreigners who would seek to take this country from us by colonisation, enabling, enabled by mass Im immigration, and the debasement of Irish citizenship by uh, means of the state conferring uh, uh, paper Irish citizenship on foreigners who will never be truly Irish. Yeah. It, it is the duty of we in the National Party to strive to bring about an end, to bring about an end to mass immigration as we are committed to by principle number seven of the party programme, and by doing so to take our country back, thereby ensuring that the future of the Irish nation into prosperity is preserved. Aresh, your eye.